Hello, my beloved simplifiers. Welcome. Welcome to another beautiful episode. And this one is actually the second part of the last episode that we did, Kadar. Destiny. May God make it easy for us. Uh, we did it, and usually when I do simplified videos, I give analogies from prophetic perspectives and from the real time perspective and the one we did last week is from the real time perspective so god said we need the prophetic so this is it may god make it easy thank you again for tuning in and thank you all for subscribing if you have not subscribed yet hit the link in the bottom get subscribed so you can get it fresh from the oven May God make it easy. Destiny. Destiny is real. And there is a chapter in the Holy Book that I would like us to look at. The creation of man. I think it's Surah Tul Araf. The creation when God began creating human beings. When God created, as we spoke in the previous episodes, that first God made light. So when God was going to create us, our greatest father that he created, number one was Anabi Adam, Ali Salam. God made Adam. But before God made Adam, there were angels way before Adam. And in Surah Al-Araf, my sister, can you read this part for me? Give me verse 11. It is we who created you and gave you shape. Then we said the angels bowed down to Adam, and they bowed down. Not so Iblis, he refused to be of those who bow down. Allah said, what prevented you from bowing down when I commanded you? Thank you, my sister. Wait. So... When God said to all the angels, after God has made Adam, this is how you will know there is destiny. Because before God made Adam, God sent one angel to go and bring the clay that he's going to use to create Adam. Adam looked like me. Adam looks like you. Adam is made the same way God made us. Angels are made of different fiber. We are made of clay. And because God created Adam in front of the angels, they wanted to be a little rebellious when God said, bow to him. Now go ahead and continue the reading. Thank you. He said, I am better than he. You created me from fire and him from clay. Allah said, Get you down from here. Thank you. Stay right there. God created Satan from fire. But he made Adam from clay. And because Satan, God sent them, bring me the clay. So they wanted to be, they think, he think he can be disrespectful to the command of God. Because uh, you know how we say familiarity breeds contempt? Who do you think you are, Satan, to oppose the instruction of your creator? But God did something 
when he was making Adam. God put something in him that is called memory. And God has pre-coded him with the information of the questions that he's going to ask that the angels will not know. So, when God said, why wouldn't you obey my instruction? He is better creation than all of you. Because his destiny is already destined to be greater than all of them. Because God has precoded Adam with all the details he will need to fulfill his journey throughout his creation. And that set him aside from the rest of the angels. And in my country, we have something in school we call Orijo. Um, some school students, they will understand that terminology. Orijo meaning to an exam, secret answers to an exam that is coming up. That is called Orijo. <laughs> but God has given Adam that power. The power to know this information and the power to retain those details. So when God told the angels to bow to our prophet, prophet Adam, alayhi salam, they were a little reluctant because they were there when God made him. And God said, you don't know what I know. You don't see what I see. But God didn't have to t explain anything to them, but he did anyways. And God said, because God likes to show us. So, not that we don't believe sometimes. But sometimes the proof is in the pudding. If we can see, seeing can be sometimes believing. So God said, watch. Adam, what is this? Adam mentioned the name. In my case, simplify. What is this? I'll say phone. So God said, Adam, what is this? Adam gave the name of the object. Allah says, Adam, what is this? Adam gave the name of the prime object. And as Adam, as Adam passed the test, and the angels knew, see, they're not like me and you that we don't know something, but want to act like, okay, if you ask me, you didn't ask me, you don't know if I know or not. Angels are not like that. They knew they don't know it. And Adam knew it, and Adam said the names. So that proved seniority over them. So they bowed to Adam. And here comes Shaitan. Satan, may the cause of Allah always be on him. When God said, bow to Adam, he said, what should I buy to bow to him? I was there when you created him. As a matter of fact, you made me out of fire. You made him out of clay. So I should be of a senior to him. He should be bowing to me. And God said, Shaitan bowed to Adam. He refused. Sister, can you proceed and tell me the next verse? I think we'll be 13 now. Allah said, get you down from here. It is not for you to be arrogant here. Get out, for you are of the meanest of creatures. He said, Give me a respite till the day they are raised up. Thank you. Stay right there. So, Satan left. God kicked him out. God, please don't kick me out of your presence. Don't kick any of the simplier, simplifiers out of your presence. Because in your presence is your Rahman, your Rahim, your Malik, your Kudus, your Salam. Please. Don't kick us out of your presence. But that's what God did to Iblis, Shaitan. Kick them out of the Garden of Eden. Kick them out of Al Jannah Fridaus, the highest rank of Al Jannah. And he said to God, If you kick me out, you know what I would do? I would take every product that come out of Adam, I would take them down. I will convince them of the worst part of what they should be. My sister, proceed. Allah said, be you among those who have respite. He said, because you have thrown me out of the way, I will lie in wait for them on your straight way. Then I will assault them from before them and behind them, 
from their right and their left. Nor will you find in most of them gratitude for your mercies. Thank you. So Satan said, they won't even see me coming. I will come to them from the left to the right, from their front to the back. I will attack them. I will take them away from your straight path. I will take them away that you don't even deem them fitting, befitting of your mercy. You don't even think they deserve your mercy anymore. That is what devil will do. But back to destiny. See, there are two paths in life. And you will know when you're on the right path. Because when Adam was leaving the garden of Eden, my sister, can you proceed? Because I don't want to skip. Allah said, get out from this disgraced and expelled. If any of them follow you, I will fill hell with you all. Oh, Adam, you and your wife dwell in the garden and enjoy its good things as you wish. But do not approach this tree or you run into harm and transgression. Then Satan began to whisper suggestions to them in order to reveal to them their shame that was hidden from them before. He said, Your Lord only forbade you this tree, lest you should become angels or such being as live forever. Thank you. So after Satan threw tantrum in front of God, he's going to lead us astray. He's going to take us away from the paradise of God. He's going to, he's going to di direct our minds away from the ways that God wants us to be. But God said to Adam, you can go ahead, enjoy the blessings, the, the, the fruits of my paradise, but don't touch one tree. That tree will be tempting. Don't go close to it. But you know what devil did? Look at destiny. Because don't think God didn't know that devil would do all that. And don't think God didn't know that this is the path. Everything is God's plan. Everything. And devil said, your God did it on purpose. He knew that this fruit bears the most, the sweetest fruits. This tree bears the sweetest fruit. That's why he says you can eat everything else, but not this one. Look at Adam, our Baba, in front of God, in front of him, Satan threw all the tantrums. And Satan made the promise to God that every man you make, I will lead them astray. Shouldn't that be a sign to Adam that, no, don't, I'm not going to listen to you. He still listened. <laughs> the power of destiny. The power of destiny. And when he ate from the fruit, everything, he saw himself. Eve saw herself. They saw themselves bare naked. They saw the things that God has been shielding them from. Everything became clear to them. And God said, you got to go. You were disobedient. Now you have to go to the world and now you have to labor before you can eat. See, everything could have been free for us. And we don't have to walk. Just ask and it shall be. Just think it and you have it. But because our, our papa, the first man, the first woman, they did that, they committed the first sin. They ate from the tree that God forbade. That's why we have to labor. But back to destiny. Because don't think God didn't know. God knew that they would do that. They will disobey God. Because if they didn't do that, they wouldn't be me and you. Because after they did that, then God told them, go. You will labor before you eat. You will stress. You will go through time to time, weather to weather, season to season. And that is when they started to conceive and make you and I. If that did not happen, that first destiny didn't strike, me and you, there would be no existence of us. No. But it's all part of God's plan. God's plan. Now pay attention to this. Because when God told Adam and Eve to go, Adam asked God a question. I said, we went against your will. And we got to go. 
how would we know next time? If we are doing something that is not pleasing to you, when we're no longer disposed to you, and God says, you will know, because it's inside you. It's inside you. You will know when you're about to do something right and when you're about to do something wrong. My brothers, my sisters, it's inside you. It is your conscience. Nobody in this world that do something wrong that will not know. Now, they may do it because they feel like they don't have any choice. They may do it because they feel like they didn't know before. And God said to Adam, you will know. You will know when you're doing something right and you will know when you've done something wrong. Because the same way we have put memory in you that made you shine in front of the angels, we've given you that spirit. The conscience is inside you. When you're about to go astray, when Satan is whispering to you, your conscience will tell you. And when I am talking to you, your conscience will tell you. And you will be able to differentiate between what is right and what is wrong. God give us that gift. It's part of our destiny. And also, when we're walking the trail of our lives, when we're walking the path that our destiny want to take us, we will know. Because everything will be moving well. But we're about to go a path that the destiny doesn't, our destiny is not leading us. You will know. Because you have that thing in your mind. That thing will sit in your chest. That will sound like, you feel like anxiety. Like, I mean, is this, is this me? This is outside of my personality. Something will be telling you don't do it. But sometimes when we're conflicted, we don't know if we should take that step or take the leap of faith or let it go. The best thing to do at that time is to pray. Just pray and God will let you know. The step you're about to take is just big for you. That's why you're feeling that. Because we're about to thrust you into a new breakthrough. We're about to thrust you into a greater height. Or God will tell you, no, don't do it. It's going to lead you astray. That is a danger zone. You will know when destiny is leading you the right path or when you're about to just stray off. When you're about to do something that is, your destiny is not supporting it. God is not supporting that decision. You will know because it's inside you. And I'll tell you this, my brother, my sister. I cannot know it for you. Your mom cannot know it for you. Your brother cannot know it for you. Because when God says, I'm closer to you than your juggler vein, he didn't say, I'm closer to you than your mom's juggler vein. I'm closer to you than your imam's juggler vein. He didn't say that. He says, I'm closer to you than your juggler vein. So when you call me, answer you that's what he said so when you feel like you are at a crossroad you don't know which decision to make because your destiny is going one way and you feel like which path call God he will answer you ask him ask him he will be there for you my brothers and my sisters for today's episode of Simplified for this topic because and I'm so sorry because um, I'm looking at 15, 18 minutes threshold and this is a very powerful topic. So next time we can expand shape more. Ask any question by the grace of God we will answer you. Our email address is listed below. You can always email us any question, any suggestion, any request. By the grace of God, we'll be able to fulfill it. Thank you very much, and I promise you this, everything that I've said that is good, I will belong to my God. And anything that I say that is incorrect, anything I say that is not up to God, God, please forgive me. I'm just your imperfect perfection. Thank you very much for tuning in. Until the next time.
keep it simple. Salam alaikum.